Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this virtual roundtable on climate, diversity, and the role of STEM. Uh, my name is Geert Asselbergs. I'm the coordinator of the EU STEM coalition. And before we begin, I will give a brief introduction into today's meeting program. Well, first of all, the purpose of the meeting. Um, well, the, the purpose of today's meeting is to provide input for the European Commission's upcoming uh, recommendation on uh, uh, education for environmental sustainability. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Yes. So the purpose of the meeting is to provide input for this recommendation, and we will do this in the form of a position paper. Um, well, to uh, to do that, we have uh, we have um, created the following meeting program that you see on the screen right now. Uh, we'll start with a little bit of general context, uh, a little bit uh, of an overview of the relevant EU level developments and some of the communications that the European Commission published recently around this topic. Uh, then we'll have three presentations of case studies <clears throat> that we think uh, give a good illustration of some of the main challenges that relate to this topic. And then uh, we end with a little bit of a, of a discussion round. Unfortunately, we cannot do this live today, so we'll find a different format for that. Uh, but there will be an opportunity also for the viewers to still give input in our in the position paper uh, that we will ultimately submit to the European Commission. Now then finally, before we begin, uh, what will we uh, do after the session? Well, I already mentioned this position paper a few times. Uh, this position paper will become available in concept form on Thursday. So you'll have uh, until Thursday to provide uh, input still if you'd like to do so. Uh, and that will be uh, basically the summary of all the input that we have collected from the network. Okay, then I would now like to give the word to Mrs. Sumati Subramaniam, who works at DG EAC uh, of the European Commission, who will set the stage by giving us an overview of all the relevant EU level developments. Uh, Sumati, go ahead. Thank you, Geft. I'm sharing my screen now. Yes, perfect. Good. Okay, so uh, thank you and uh, good morning again, everyone. Um, despite this is uh, this happened, so Gert, uh, carry on, good. <laughs> so I'm um, uh, here today, uh, very happy to be here, and I'm joined by my colleagues Julie Anderson, Deidre Hodson, Ulrika Pesiotis, and Vladimir Garkov, and we're the uh, team working on this uh, initiative on the proposal. Council recommendation on education for environmental sustainability. We look forward to um, hearing your views and also uh, for you to share your good practice with us. So I'll set uh, the uh, stage for you by giving you a little bit of uh, political context. Uh, the European Green Deal is about improving the well being of people and it provides an action plan to boost. Uh, efficient use of resources by make, uh, moving into clean circular economy and restoring biodiversity and cutting pollution. It's a growth strategy that will transform the union into a modern resource efficient and competitive economy. Where there are no net emissions of uh, greenhouse gases by 2050. Economic growth is decoupled from resource use and no person and no place is left behind. We can only do this by turning climate and environmental challenges into opportunities and making the transition just and inclusive for all. So it's clear to see from this uh, slide that many of the European Green Deal policy areas are STEM intensive. Not only that, these STEM fields need to be forward looking. And what do I mean by forward looking? So we need to uh, preempt what is coming in terms of technology and combine it with non-STEM fields as well. So all Europeans must have skills, knowledge and competences to contribute to the priorities of the European Green Deal. And this starts with transformative and inclusive education. In the European uh, education area, uh, on the, uh, the communication on the European education area, you'll see that it identifies the support for the green and digital transitions as one of the main challenges to address uh, in EU policy cooperation. Now further, the communication um, also prioritizes diversity via inclusion and gender equality. 
in the teachers and trainers dimension and the higher education dimension, STEM education is prioritized. STEM teacher shortages and the need to make STEM fields more attractive via the STEM approach are key. So how can we make this happen when there are not enough skilled STEM workers in Europe? There is a lack of interest and low performance in STEM subjects, widespread lack of digital skills. The shortage of skills compounded by a lack of diversity hinder the ability of our industries and SMEs to be competitive and innovative. This impacts Europe's ability to address global challenges like climate change, mobility, and energy. Um, most of the data on diversity in STEM relates to gender balance. One third of women tertiary graduates in STEM and one in two men STEM graduates work in an occupation matching their educational qualification. Here you see a 2019 study on women, gender, equality, and the energy transition in the EU, which showed that more, than, more men than women are working in the energy sector. However, the challenge does not only lie in getting more women into STEM, diversity and inclusion must be tackled on equal footing. And uh, many of the STEM, EU STEM coalition members, such as the Board of European Students of Technology and CESAR, have drawn attention to the issue of diversity, inclusion, and equality in their publications. Europe needs more of its girls and women, minority groups, to enter and graduate from STEM fields of study. We need an increased share of STEM graduates to create solutions to complex challenges, and we need the diversity to ensure creative, innovative, and inclusive technological solutions. Lack of gender equality and diversity in general undermines our efforts to tackle the climate crisis. For this, we must increase gender and diversity in STEM. The absence of women in climate-related STEM roles is particularly worrying when it comes to the effects of climate change. Women have a lot to lose, so we really need to pay attention to this problem. So what has the, com uh, the commission has been championing the STEAM approach to learning and teaching. And why? Because it brings quality STEM education through interdisciplinarity. The STEAM approach removes traditional barriers between subjects and connects STEM education with arts, design, humanities, and social sciences. Curricula are more likely to interest students if they integrate economic, environmental, social, and scientific issues. STEM and non-STEM fields of study are connected by means of real-world problem-solving, collaboration, inquiry, and critical thinking to deliver the wider range of skills that drive innovation and creativity. For those of you who heard Sebastian before, you got a really good example of that. Now, there should be focus on innovation and the applied process of designing solution to complex contextual problems using current tools and innovative technologies. There's room for improvement in strengthening links and interaction between formal, non-formal, and informal learning. So this uh, STEAM approach, it promotes cooperation with non-academic partners and intersectoral learning that emphasizes participatory learning, builds confidence, and provides links to the world of work. STEAM approach to learning and teaching harnesses the potential of other fields to increase the attractiveness and relevance of STEM education and thereby to make STEM subjects more appealing and uh, engaging and accessible to a wider range of students. STEM competences attained through the STREAM approach will be a key component in the proposal for a council recommendation on education for environmental sustainability. As such, it's also vital that diversity, inclusion, and gender equality aspects in STEM are taken into account. The, uh, the council recommendation will take, um, the following activities are foreseen for it. It will um, strengthen cooperation and peer exchange. It will integrate environmental issues in national education systems, a lifelong learning approach, embedding environmental sustainability across the full spectrum of education. It will promote a whole institution approach and most importantly, it'll empower the learner to act on a personal and community level. So what is foreseen uh, in terms of uh, procedure? 
what is uh, currently being done is a mapping of uh, a mapping study. And uh, also there is research going on uh, for a report on uh, Erasmus Plus projects which are tackling uh, the topic. And we will soon launch a public consultation as part of which you may um, submit your position paper. Uh, we expect this to be open in the middle of June, so in a week or so. And the adoption of the council recommendation is expected in the fourth quarter of this year. Now, another initiative that is linked to the council recommendation is the Education for Climate Coalition. This is a broad partnership involving the education community at EU national and local levels, which was set up as a flagship initiative of the European education area. The coalition will be a key instrument for effectively capturing the bottom up initiatives from the educational community to support the transition to climate neutrality, especially in relation to the development of green skills and change in behavior. The coalition will mobilize available expertise, engagement and networks in education in all member states and support the creation, testing and implementation of innovative solutions with students and school communities. So a lot of your best practice here, please contribute to the Education for Climate Co uh, Coalition. It'll complement the other Green Deal actions such as the Climate Pact by focusing intensively on commitment to adapting behavior by raising awareness and strengthening knowledge about climate change and sustainable development. It will serve as a platform for sharing knowledge and experience, connecting stakeholders and stimulating innovation in education at EU level through pledges and concrete actions involving young people, schools, higher education and higher education institutions. So you see here the priorities are skills, teachers, behavior change, education science, interaction and awareness. So in light of these um, initiatives, the Commission welcomes today's roundtable and its focus on diversity. My colleagues and I look forward to the case studies that will be presented and your position paper with input to the Council recommendation. Thank you very much. Back to you, Ger. Thank you very much, Samati, um, for such an yeah, insightful overview of everything that's going on on the European level. Uh, we'll, we'll, we are, as a network, obviously very happy to, uh, to contribute. Uh, and I think it's very interesting that the European Commission has identified the, uh, the supply of STEM skilled people as such a vital ingredient uh, for, uh, for making this transition to environmentally sustainable societies. Um, this is also a good segue to the next part of the program in which we uh, will present the three uh, case studies that you already mentioned. And to give a brief introduction into those, uh, what we did is we tried to identify what are really the, the, the main challenges that emerge from the input from our members. And we arrived at the following three challenges. The first one is the gender dimension that you has, have already mentioned. So basically getting more girls into STEM, but also beyond increasing diversity in general into the STEM uh, education tracks and also in STEM jobs. The second challenge, um, we already made kind of start with that with the presentation of Sebastian, uh, is how to get good practices uh, adopted uh, uh, by a mainstream, uh, mainstream audience. So how do we basically mainstream good practices so that we can really generate the mass that is needed? And then the final challenge that we will discuss is basically how to decrease the fragmentation of initiatives or more positively framed, how do we improve synergies between everything that's going on from EU level uh, initiatives uh, down to the national and regional programs and, uh, and actions. So for the first challenge, uh, which relates to uh, getting uh, more girls into STEM, I would like to give the word uh, to Mrs. Susanne uh, Jacobs Bohak, who works at the ZDE central office in North Rhine-Westphalia in Germany, who will present two case studies from her network. Uh, Suzanne, go ahead. Yes, thanks a lot, Gerd. Welcome, everybody. I will um, share my screen just a second. So, just tell me when you can see it, please. We can see the screen perfectly now. Okay, I will 
try to put it in the presentation models. It works, I think. Yes. Sorry. Ah, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for the invitation to um, contribute to this um, round table and to give us the opportunity to present um, our activities, how to get more girls into the, the STEM topics. My name is um, Susanne Jacobs and I'm working in the ZTE central office in uh, North Rhine-Westphalia. We are, let's say, around 16, 18 people working in the um, central office. And we are in charge of uh, all the local networks. I will show you um, later on. And I'm personally, I'm advising eight of these networks. I'm responsible for the topic um, girls and STEM and for the topic ZTE goes Europe. So that's a strategy we are working on right now. For the next, within the next 10 minutes, I will give you a really brief introduction about ZTE. It's a community offensive to get future STEM professionals from North Rhine Westphalia. And then I have two case studies for you. One is from the ZTE network Cologne, Girls for Innovation, and one from the ZTE network Gütersloh. So let me show you. This is a little bit um, complex, let's say. Here you have the map of North Rhine-Westphalia. The red Zs are local networks. And uh, the white circles in green, these are all um, student, CTE student laboratories. Um, how to start? So we started nearly 2004, but then the map was really blank. Um, let me just add that um, here we have the frontier to the Netherlands and uh, North Rhine Westphalia is the most populated um, Bundesland in Germany with around 18 million inhabitants. So to give you a, a, um, a format um, where we are working in. And um, in 2004, that was still blank. And now in 2021, we have um, we have in, in every city and in every um, administrative district, we have a local ZTE network. These are now 47 regional networks. We are working with a bottom-up approach. That means that um, from, from every city, we have a different structure how they are working there. So in some, in, in, in some, set, some ZTE networks, they are um, built in... Uh, in local universities, some are in, um, uh, in uh, business, uh, um, uh, business support organizations, and so on. Um, ZTE is backed by three ministries, so we are um, public funded. Um, leading is the Ministry of uh, science, culture and science. And we, are, we have um, the backup as well from the Ministry of Economy and the Ministry of um, Education. Um, yeah, we all ZTE networks together have uh, now more than 4,500 partners. The partners are coming from uh, schools, uh, especially, and then from, uh, from higher education, research institutes, from the local um, economy, mostly um, um, SMEs. And um, yeah, we are reaching more than 300,000 young people each year, more or less. So within Corona, it was a little bit less, but I, I hope we come back to the, to the level we had before. And normally we have 45% uh, girls. Um, yeah, we are reaching 60% of all secondary schools within our ZTE community. And we have two funding, internal funding programs for the ZTE community. One is uh, vocational and study guidance. And we have a, a ERDF ZTE program. Um, yeah, I would say that it's, um, that should it be for the moment? And I will uh, go a little bit further. Here you have the map again. The first case study comes from the region of Cologne. 
So that was, or that is still an ERDF project, which um, is what was initi initi initiated by the ZTE network Cologne. It, um, it has a duration between 2019 and 2021. So it will um, end this summer. And um, the ZTE network Cologne um, initiated a one year scholarship program for really um, for girls who are already um, excited about the world of science and technology. And um, the aim was to increase, of course, the female potential for skilled STEM workers in Cologne and its surroundings. Um, as I said, at, uh, the scholarship um, last one year. And in the first, uh, in the first round, uh, they had 20 girls. In the second round, there were 10 girls. They are now finishing their course. And um, for the next year, they have another 14 girls, which will um, benefit from this um, scholarship program, but then without the ERDF funding. Um, yes, the target group are already school girls from the grade night to 11 who already uh, like the, um, the STEM topics. Um, they have a couple of events which uh, they are running through. They are starting with a summer school, they are ending with a summer school, and in between they have monthly the so-called STEM Future Friday. Um, why, why have they invented such a program? So the idea was born due to the fact that um, the CETE Center Cologne, they um, have offered already regular uh, vacation camps for girls within the STEM topic. And they have been very popular and the girls really liked them. And um, what they liked was that they could um, exchange with other like-minded girls. And, um, but nevertheless, the team from the CETE Cologne, they, um, they found out that um, even the young women who have taken part in such um, vacation camps, they preferred nevertheless to choose a commercial or humanities profession or something else, but nothing in the STEM topic. So they invented this one year scholarship, which should encourage the, the female students to choose as well the STEM topic as a career. Unfortunately, up to now, we cannot say anything about, about the outcome if it works. But uh, it will come soon, I hope. So the, the modules for this one year um, scholarship uh, are um, talent coaching. They are doing project work. Each girl is, uh, has uh, her own project and um, which she uh, has to um, present in the, in the last summer school. They get knowledge about um, methods of 4.0 working environment. They get mentoring and um, role models, female role models are um, included in the scholarship and um, they are doing individual STEM activities. And um, in all these elements are um, uh, accompanied by local partners. So for example, the STEM Future Fridays they do company visits, they um, have female role models as guests and so on. So the girls, they, um, they really liked that course and uh, all uh, ZTE partners are um, enthusiastic a bit about it um, too, because uh, the teacher, they can remark uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, a, a greater, um, uh, how to say, um, they, they really feel that the um, girls are benefiting from it, from it. Okay, that was the first um, case study. The second is from the region of uh, Gütersloh. Um, here we have another um, context. So that comes from the ZTE network um, itself. So it was not, not a, a own project. Um, in Gütersloh, the, um, 
especially the teachers and the, the ZTE network team, they have thought about how can we inspire more girls for STEM. Um, from the um, ZTE central office, we have uh, offered a so-called academy for that topic. And after that, a working group in the region of Gütersloh was founded for experience exchange. And um, there the leading question was, what can teachers do to inspire more girls for STEM? In the first round, they, um, they invented um, things which, you can, which um, they uh, could do within, their, within, their, um, within the school. But then this um, working group grew rapidly. Apart from the teachers, uh, the local employment agency was interested, local um, entrepreneurs, and the local municip municipal uh, education institution. And they did um, several workshops, pilot projects, and um, they did a big survey with girls from uh, ZTE partner schools. So with those who already um, had, uh, had STEM as a compulsory additional subject. And they... Um, yeah, they were, they were able to say, what do we need to get the girls into the STEM topics? And they um, developed the six recommendations to inspire more girls for STEM. The first one is um, contextualization. So to put each discipline into a, a real context. What is um, important for the girls as well is um, to, to get to... to, to, to um, to help them to get practical experience. Then what is important too is the interdisciplinarity. So that uh, really goes with the STEAM approach. So, um, and um, for the girls, it's important um, to get a special encouragement. So they, uh, they, um, they, are, they like if when, when a teacher says, look, you are very good in chemistry, biology, math, whatever, so um, go ahead with it, for example, that's uh, with the, by the girls, it's more important than by the, girl, by the boys. Then the um, support of the parents is um, crucial as well. And um, it is good to have uh, the peer group as multipliers. So to have kind like uh, ambassadors, STEM ambassadors, um, to get other girls uh, enthusiastic about STEM. Two. And to what, uh, the, in, in what they have done in Gütersloh is um, that they are looking that all measures, workshops, and courses are developed along these recommendations. And the team there is really persuaded of this effectiveness. And due to that fact, they have uh, created uh, two new projects. The one uh, is called Falling Protection. So this um, has been done at a, at a school. And um, the, the head of the school wanted to have a new design of the school yard underneath the climbing wall. So that's um, the mean with Falling Protection. And they had an interdisciplinary team. So not only um, girls from from uh, from an informatic course, for example, but as well from from a creative course, art, and um, together with two companies, they developed really this falling protection they have now at their schoolyard, and that was a really um, really successful project, and it can be um, it can be implemented uh, at other schools as well. And then we had the project uh, Lemonade. It was a comprehensive school working together with a local brewery in the field of biochemistry and product development. And um, the group of the female STEM ambassadors, uh, they want to implement this pilot project and together with the local brewery, they are going to develop a new lemonade according to their flavor ideas. And the brewery is really interested in this because they could potentially build up a new business field at that point. Yeah, that was um, 
that were the, the two um, case studies. Um, I have just made um, some conclusions how to increase the female participation. So what is important, I said it already, is the contextualization of STEM topics. It's, it is important to have long-term measures, um, the role models, what is important as well as to have out of school measures uh, as well in student laboratories and the interaction between the local uh, actors is um, a good success factor um, for this. Uh, kind of actions. So thanks a lot. And uh, if, you were, if you would like to inform you a little bit more about um, ZTE, we have, uh, uh, you can look up the ZTE portal in English. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much for the presentation, Suzanne. Um, yeah, maybe to uh, mention or highlight a few points that really stood out to me in these case studies. Uh, well, first of all, this uh, bottom-up approach that you mentioned. Uh, so we're, we're having a huge network in which a lot of smaller initiatives are embedded. I think that's really, um, uh, that, that's, that's a really interesting approach. Um, you can also see that it works because if I understood correctly, the uh, ERDF uh, funded initiative that you mentioned will even be continued with the funding of the of the local stakeholders uh, after the ERDF funding um, ends. So I think that in itself is a, is, a, is a fantastic sign that what's being developed there locally really responds to the local needs. Um, so, uh, and, and the final thing that I wanted to highlight was what you mentioned all the way in the beginning of your presentation, where the initiative uh, that you first presented, it was functioning well in terms of participation and in terms of the enthusiasm of the people who participated, but wasn't delivering uh, real changes in terms of the choices that the students made afterward. And there were some, some actions taken to, uh, to remedy that. And I think measuring impact beyond that, that process level, that particip uh, participation level, um, I think that's quite, quite unique. And I, I found that very interesting to see that that was already uh, implemented in this particular example. So um, that's also a nice segue into, uh, into the second presentation, which will be given by uh, Mr. Sebastian Smith, who is the program director of the JetNet and TechNet network here at the Dutch National STEM platform. And he will, um, uh, present uh, a case study that relates to the challenge of mainstreaming innovative education practices uh, in an effective and, and quick manner. So, Sebastian, go right ahead. Yes, thank you, Geert. And, and, and a very interesting story uh, we just heard. And I'm very happy to hear that, that yeah, well, in Germany, you use the, the role models as well and the out of school approach and the uh, 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 long-term measure measurements, uh, those are all ingredients we try to, to make sure we have them as well here in the Netherlands. So thank you for that. Thanks for sharing that. Um, at JetNet and TechNet, my name is uh, Sebastian Smit. I've been working for the JetNet and TechNet program uh, since 2008. Um, and, and it's really a flagship, flagship program of the National STEM platform. And why is that? Because JetNet and TechNet builds the bridge between schools and uh, industry and companies, uh, and, and we've been doing so since, since 2003, where five multinationals took initiative to make sure that we, we, we need to make more youngsters enthusiastic about STEM, and we wanted to show them what it's like to work in a uh, technology environment, uh, and uh, very soon other companies saw the, the meanings of, of JetNet and TechNet and said, well, we, we would like to contribute as well. So the network started growing and teachers saw that, well, what's happening here is very useful. Yeah, we can use facilities of companies, uh, we can use role models, guest lectures, et cetera, et cetera, that really has some added value to uh, the education we give. And, and besides that, we also see that, that schools who participate within the JetNet and TechNet program have a higher amount of students who choose a STEM profile. Profile. So the activities we do and who take place, they, they, they have an impact. Uh, so that's also a very uh, uh, good thing as well. Um, well, the challenge uh, that we're up to the, in these times is to make sure that that's, that's you know, how can we come up with a, with, a, with a new challenge with ingredients and expertise we, we, we learned before uh, and to, 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 to reach out to as many uh, uh, youngsters and schools as possible. 
uh, that's where we really challenged ourselves, ourselves, and we did that in a coalition with other parties. But we came up with the largest escape room uh, of the of the Netherlands, especially of course in Corona times. We 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 used the digital highways, um, and that's where we focused on with this uh, escape room, focused on digital skills of youngsters. Uh, where um, and 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 really we uh, we did that together with the FME, which which is a Dutch employees uh, organization. Um, uh, for the tech industry and together with other parties as well. So really as a coalition, and we reached over more than 83,000 participants, youngsters in primary and secondary education. Uh, so that was really nice. Uh, and, and, and it took such a, a fly in into these kind of numbers. Uh, about the activity, well, uh, you can do it in your classroom, the activity. Uh, which makes it very easy. It's for primary education and secondary education. The theme is to help Nikki complete uh, the first climate neutral uh, sailing tour around the world. Um, um, well, the, the, the challenge says it all, uh, uh, and th th that's really appealing to, to youngsters as well. So uh, uh, when you're sailing, of course, you can use all sorts of energy, uh, friendly energy, uh, uh, water energy, sun energy, wind energy, you, you name it. Uh, and with the use of artificial artificial intelligence, uh, yeah, well, youngsters are being challenged to come up with uh, with new ideas uh, uh, to use, uh, and there's a little bit of competition in it, as, in it as well, which is also a very nice ingredient to have. Um, we, um, uh, of course, to to make sure that you you can. Uh, reach these numbers, you, you need a, a, a healthy infrastructure, I call it, uh, or fertile soil uh, that, that schools know, uh, okay, there's a, a project communicated by the JetNet and TechNet program, hey, that, that we know that program, uh, we would like to participate in it. So we built all sorts of regional networks between schools and, and, and companies at local level. And, and on top of that, they, they participate in these kind of national challenges. Uh, and that combination of those two with, a, with, a, with loads and loads of activities on regional level and at national level, yeah, you, you create a sort of perfect storm to, 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 well, to make sure that you reach these numbers like 83,000 youngsters, uh, and it's still growing at the moment. Uh, so that, that's a very good thing. Um, and we well of course we've been working since 2003 on building those those regional infrastructure those regional networks of companies and schools so it's not just something you can do overnight it, it takes a while long-term uh, investments uh, but it, it it starts to pay off with these kind of of of, of, of projects um, of course we we look at the, the the quality as well we we look at what's 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 in it in the schools what's in it for the schools when it comes to the curricula of schools or the digital skills are in it, or it meets the, the curricula of schools, which makes sure that, that teachers can give it a spot as well. Eh? They, 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 they can invest time in it, and it has a certain purpose when it comes to their education. Uh, so that makes sure that, that on that side, you, uh, you provide the, the, the help as well and the support as well. Um, uh, so we, yeah, we invest at, 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 at local uh, support, local schools, local industry, local companies, uh, in the region, and, and, and we upscale it with these kind of national programs, uh, high quality programs, I would like to call it without being very uh, uh, arrogant, but, but it's really a high quality uh, program. Um, and, 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 and we try to coordinate that as, as good as we do. And we tend to do that more and more in, in, in coalition form. So not just JetNet and TechNet. No, we do that together with other organizations who who share uh, the, the, the vision and the mission we have. Um, and that, that makes sure that we can combine our forces and, and, and capacities and means, of course, to come up with these sorts of activities. Thank you, Geert. Thank you very much, Sebastian. Uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I think the thing that stands out the most, obviously, is the sheer number of uh, participants in this particular activity. So how quickly you went from the basic idea, which in this case, uh, I think, originated at the uh, Dutch uh, Tech yep. Industry Association or Employers Organization, um, to having an activity in place that has uh, so many uh, active participants. Um, so that's uh, that's very interesting. Um, 
and and obviously you used the existing jetnet infrastructure you call it the fertile ground to yeah. uh, to to get that result definitely okay. yeah okay so um that brings us to the final presentation of today which relates to the challenge of how do we create synergies between all the different activities that are taking place so everything that takes place on the european level european initiatives european funding practices down to the national level and and the regional level uh, of which you also heard uh, in the previous presentation. So for that, I would like to give the word to uh, Mr. Alberto Terenzi, who will give a presentation about the Girls Go Circular uh, program of EIT raw materials. And uh, to give a bit of context um, with that before uh, Mr. Alberto will give his presentation, uh, Girls Go Circular is basically uh, one of the initiatives that contributes to the implementation of the uh, objectives in the digital education action plan uh, so um, it's really an eu uh, an eu initiative or an eu uh, effort uh, to move this topic forward so uh, alberto uh, go right ahead thanks so much Gert, and thanks so much for the invitation uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh yes thanks also to the um colleagues that presented before really really interesting to see and also all presentations that resonate um, very much with uh, what I am about to present so maybe a couple of words uh, about me um, I my name is Alberto Terenzi and I am an education project manager at EIT Raw Materials um, EIT Raw Materials is one of the eight knowledge and innovation communities uh, which uh, have originated from the EIT, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. And our mission is basically that of creating a more sustainable and competitive uh, raw material sector um, through innovation. And we understand innovation as the intersection of uh, education, hence also my role and the project of um, research and of course uh, of a close link with the industry and startups. So um, the Gersko Circular project, uh, and thanks so much for introducing it, is basically a new funded initiative to foster uh, gender equality in STEM. Uh, and um, the action uh, of the Digital Education Action Plan that you mentioned here that we are uh, supporting is Action 13, so really encouraging women's participation in STEM. Uh, and how do we want to do that? Basically, we have created an online dedicated learning program on a platform that we have also um, um, developed um, for um, young students, for secondary school students aged 14 to 18. We've decided to go for that target audience because that's exactly the age uh, in which students are still in school, but they're already pondering about their future and kind of discovering their interests and passions. Um, so uh, it seemed really the right target uh, audience for us. The project kicked off in 2020, and um, basically that was the year in which we built uh, everything off the ground um, and during 2020 we already had a pilot phase where we reached uh, 1,600 students out of which 1,200 uh, girls so we really tested our program. Uh, during the presentation I will be using sometimes girls and sometimes students uh, the reason is that although we focus mainly and primarily on girls uh, because of our goal, we have decided since we want to also foster mainstreaming and integration into school curricula of the program to not exclude um, boys from the program, but actually to have a concept for which uh, girls uh, and, and boys can work collaboratively at the program. Um, so that's why sometimes we use the general term um, students. The project is coordinated by ATU materials, but we're working together with other uh, three at the moment, knowledge and innovation communities of DAT, uh, that is EIT manufacturing, EIT food and climate kick. And this aspect is fundamental because, um, and I heard before, you know, the importance of linking digital skills to then education for environmental sustainability. Our program is grounded in the circular economy, which is really the tool in which we want to integrate the sustainability aspect into the learning about um, STEM and digital skills. And so having different kicks, which uh, basically uh, uh, 
tackle and address the circular economy from their uh, angle, starting from their area of expertise is really fundamental uh, then for the students to get a bigger perspective on it. So um, our ultimate goal is to empower at least 50,000 girls in 15 plus of what we call risk countries by 2027. Risk countries um, are those countries that are defined as moderate and modest innovators according to the European Innovation Scoreboard. And uh, they correspond roughly to Southern and Eastern Europe. Uh, so these are the countries that we are tackling uh, in the project, at least for the moment. Um, so what skills and competencies do we want to uh, transfer, do we want to teach? Digital skills as the transversal skills that um, girls uh, uh, will need and everyone really needs for careers and jobs, uh, um, these days, uh, so they are really fundamental uh, for any endeavor. Entrepreneurial skills, um, so many of the activities that we propose are group activities in which there is a product to be developed through digital tools uh, so that the girls and the students participating in the project also learn to work with each other, uh, to come up with solutions, to debate uh, ideas and, and find a consensus, et cetera, et cetera. And then, as I was saying, the fundamental um, aspect of the circular economy. So the learning uh, platform that we developed is divided in modules and each of these modules tackles one of, of the aspects of the circular economy that you see on the screen. And we really try to go for um, topics that would um, resonate with uh, students that age so they would have uh, an immediate also kind of um, that would engine an immediate behavioral reflection in the students and um, put them in the position to be also agents of change in changing the way that they, first of all, uh, um, approach uh, these topics in their daily life. Um, I talked about the online learning platform. This is called the Circular Learning Space. Uh, and basically this is an open platform. So anybody can create a profile on the platform and join, uh, but it is mostly thought and designed for classroom um, activities. Uh, this is because uh, we, first of all, wanted to bring in that entrepreneurship aspect, the group aspect, and also because, and I will talk about it a bit uh, more, um, a bit more uh, uh, in the course of the presentation, we also want to mainstream, and I've heard the word mainstreaming uh, um, in the presentations that were, that were held before, which is really important. We want to mainstream these also in school curricula. Um, so as I said, the modules tackle the circular economy, but each of them then offers activities that uh, go into digital skills and entrepreneurship. Um, so it's a mix of knowledge and skills, uh, also to keep it real and to really, um, as it was said before, I think by Susanna, put disciplines into a practical context. I like that definition. So I'm also repeating it here because that's exactly the approach that we're having. Um, in 2021, what are we up to? So we uh, will uh, reach 8,000 girls in the eight uh, risk countries that are in green on the map uh, this year. Uh, and we will do that, as I said, through a close collaboration with schools and teachers. So the, what we want to do is that we want to enthuse teachers firstly for the program and for the possibilities that the program offers so then they can transfer this enthusiasm to students and uh, also facilitate uh, the learning in schools. Um, we want to bring up the number of learning modules from the six that are currently on the platform to 10 and also uh, for the modules to uh, basically tackle uh, not only more topics related to the circular economy, but also more advanced digital skills. Last year, we focused very much on basic digital skills. This year, we're going to be a bit more advanced. This will also give teachers then the opportunity to potentially create a learning program that is also structured along levels. So they can start with um, beginners, uh, say, digital skills, and then um, move on to, to advanced. All of the skills that we, uh, and the challenges, the digital challenges that, that we have developed for the platform are grounded in the Digicomp framework. Uh, and as well as the entrepreneurship part is grounded in the Entrycomp. So I'm just highlighting this to also say, 
you know, the integration, the synergy with existing new uh, initiatives is there. Um, the last thing I want to mention for this year, because I'm very excited about that, is that uh, in collaboration with uh, DGEAC, we are uh, organizing the first uh, European and Girls in STEM forum. Uh, this will be a yearly event uh, that we plan them to organize uh, also up to the 2027 um, goal that we have. And basically uh, this will on the one hand gather the students that participated in the uh, project and give them an opportunity to um, talk to each other, but also to interact with mentors, um, especially uh, women that are uh, already already have careers in the STEM sector, so they get inspiration, but we also host a high level discussion on the future of gender equality in STEM with high level policymakers, people of the industry, and I think it is really important to connect these two levels uh, because that creates basically the overall framework uh, for, for, for the topic. So uh, really looking forward to that one and also uh, extending the uh, invitation. We will release the final date of the event soon. And so definitely would like to see as many people as possible uh, participate. What are the opportunities for students, teachers and school? And here again, I've heard mainstream before, and this is really important for us too. Um, so students obtain badges when they complete the, le the learning program, and that's to recognize the skills that they have acquired. This is something that we're doing with a view of also supporting uh, then potentially um, the, the, the students' careers in the future so that they have uh, they have a, a badge, they have a certificate that attests that they have developed certain competencies. But also teachers and schools receive a certificate because they are contributing to this effort. So we want to recognize their important contributions and also to give the schools visibility on our website. And further to recognizing then their role, we also want to show the importance of the network that we are basically creating. We are uh, active in several schools in the countries that I've shown before. And uh, this is really important. Uh, and it is also really important that the schools understand the EU network uh, dimension of the project and uh, that they are not just you know, doing a program on their own, but they're actually in a system uh, and a system that also will uh, in the future allow for exchange, new ideas um, and peer-to-peer uh, and, and -peer learning. So um, coming to really talking about synergies and collaboration opportunities, because that's uh, also what the headline of my presentation was, um, we from the very beginning have been looking to collaborate with uh, EU initiatives on digital and STEM education. One, uh, Proof is also that we are here today, uh, as we've been discussing with the EU STEM coalition on uh, ways to uh, leverage on each other's work. Um, as I said, all of the resources are grounded in um, the Commission's work on um, the DigiComp and the Entrecom, so the big kind of frameworks for digital entrepreneurial skills. And we are also looking forward to aligning with national STEM education programs, uh, because as I said, we want to really mainstream um, the uh, learning program in schools and not only in, in kind of singular schools uh, or ad hoc schools, but if there is an opportunity to also align with uh, regional national strategies for STEM education, we would be, of course, uh, very, very happy to jump in and see if what we've developed uh, could support that effort. We also want to go more strongly into training teachers because they are the facilitators uh, then of the work with the students. So they need to, of course, feel comfortable with the skills uh, that we want students to acquire to then be able to support them in doing so. Um, so we already have a training um, kind of program for teachers that participate this year and that participated last year, but we want to even make that stronger and more prominent uh, because that really also speaks uh, into the integration of the programs in school. Also, just maybe to mention quickly, the program is really structured flexibly, which means that um, teachers uh, could uh, do that either during a one-day workshop with their students but also, which has been the case, um, they can actually dilute the um, 
program into several weeks and to just use their normal class time to do that. And that's what the majority of the, majority of the teachers that have participated in, have done so far. And that was really, really good for us also because we've seen that teachers um, teaching different disciplines have done so. So we've had English teachers, we've had STEM teachers, we've had even history teachers uh, do that, which means that they feel that that can support their didactic efforts. Um, so that's really something that, uh, that uh, we were happy about and we will continue uh, to, to structure that way. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, European Women and Girls in STEM Forum, this yearly event, uh, we want to use to create a strong exchange ecosystem uh, to learn from each other and inspire each other. And finally, um, talking to the certificates and the badges that um, I've told you about before. Uh, we really want to align uh, these certificates to the EU micro certification scheme to give them even more, um, uh, you know, of, of, of an official kind of meaning and value for the students that participate so that they uh, also represent a resource for their career. So this is what I wanted to uh, tell you. Uh, more information can be found on the project website and on the circular learning space. And if um, anyone is interested in participating, you can write to girlscocircular at eatromaterials.eu and uh, uh, we will be happy to give you all of the needed information. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alberto, for a very interesting presentation. Um, just a few highlights that really stood out to me. Uh, well, uh, that, and maybe that also uh, were visible in some of the other presentations uh, are <clears throat> first this link with societal uh, challenges. So this close link, and this is already true for the kicks themselves, obviously, but uh, definitely also true for the way that this uh, project is uh, structured. Uh, but what I also really uh, like is this link with other skill sets. So you, you mentioned entrepreneurship, but that it's more like an, uh, uh, an, an, a truly interdisciplinary exercise, you could say. So it's, uh, I think that's also uh, very um, valuable to what a lot of the STEM platforms are trying to accomplish on a national or regional level. Um, and finally, I was, of course, very happy to hear you uh, talk about uh, the alignment with national and regional initiatives. Um, given these similarities, I, I really think there is a lot of potential there to um, create uh, better synergies between what's happening in, in programs like Girls Go Circular and how these materials are used on the national and regional level and uh, at what scale. And we heard some examples about that uh, earlier. So hopefully as a as a network of these national or regional actors, we can, uh, we can also uh, do our part to contribute to that. Um, so uh, that brings us to the end of the presentation section of the program. Uh, unfortunately, we will not be able to uh, go into the discussion part as we has, have originally planned it. Uh, so we'll leave it at that and we'll find a new forum to, uh, to, uh, to get that input still from the audience. But um, in any case, uh, uh, thanks very much to all three of the, or, or all four of the presenters uh, for very interesting presentations, and um, uh, we will uh, we will publish them shortly together with the meeting documents to uh, to all the participants that signed up. So thank you very much.